welcome to this special show, Next Gen Financial Services Automation in Commerce. And our spotlight today is going to be on insurance. So the first question you're seeing, of course, is really what does insurance have to do with a mobile phone? And it's a fair question, to be honest, but uh, let's try and answer it with a counter question. So has there been any time in the recent past when you've suddenly realized that your insurance premium is about to lapse and you have to make that payment by end of day and you spend a good part of the rest of the day just trying to figure out how you're going to get that check across to your agent and then try to follow up to make sure that it's reached, that it's been in cash, and that your policy still exists for you? Well, that's really something I think a lot of us have gone through and isn't, wouldn't it be really neat if you could just do all of that simply with the click of a button on a mobile phone? Yes, that's the link between insurance and a mobile phone. Of course, there are a lot of other cool things that you can do with uh, the mobile. It's got to do with insurance. Uh, if you're stuck in an accident, you can take pictures and send it right away to your insurance company uh, for the claims and a whole lot of other things out there. But really, this world is really nascent at this point of time. How can it be used? Where is it at right now? And what are the challenges it faces to make it really widespread across India, the acceptance of a mobile as a channel for insurance? We'll try and address all of that today. So let's get straight across to our uh, panelists. Uh, Mr. Joy Deep Roy, who is Chief Executive Officer and Whole Time Director at LNT Insurance. Mr. Gaurav Garg, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Tata AIG. Mr. Bhargav Das Gupta, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of ICSI Lombard General Insurance. This is Priya Kini, who is Director of Financial Institution Group at HSBC India. So welcome to the show. It's really exciting to figure out what it is that you can do with your mobile phone. Of course, with Steve Jobs and Apple and the iPod and the iPhone and the iPad, I think the mobile world is where everybody wants to be at this point of time. But really, insurance and the mobile. Let's get the take from, from, from the top head honchos from the insurance world. Jody, why don't you tell us? Well, insurance uh, as a product also involves payment. So I think any solution which uh, eases the payment procedure is attractive and uh, should sound as music to the ear of both consumers and insurers. However, one has to look at the consumer behavior and would people really be comfortable doing it? So there's an effort which is required to make people comfortable. There's an effort required to make products and services amenable to such payment mechanisms, which will make the entire thing successful. We hear that there's a uh, the clearing system, which, which we are accustomed to, the check clearing system, is now getting modernized into the mobile platform and that's what the IMPS is all about. So I think <clears throat> that what that will really bring to uh, on the table is, a, is another method of making payments from one party to another, be it the insurer to the uh, client or the client to the insurer. However, uh, it's going to likely to be use, more useful for renewals, uh, for existing customers first because the new insurance policy will entail a whole lot of other procedures and they have to be attuned unless there are products made for that. But give me your perspective on how much of a buy-in do you think you'll get from insurance companies and uh, from the retail customers that you have? First of all, I think uh, this whole uh, mobile payment thing will be tremendously successful for insurance. And I'll tell you the reasons and I'll answer your question. We find a great difficulty is when we do direct marketing sales. So when a direct marketing sales happens, you call on the phone to the customer and he agrees to buy. Now he might not have a credit card at that time or you are penetrating some clientele who do not have credit because credit card penetration is also limited but the mobile penetration is much higher. So when you are doing a direct marketing sale, you can actually close the sale by activating a text or something to the customer and making him he, he be able to pay on the phone. Then we are also talking of uh, things like we do tele-shopping networks or we advertise on TV. And now when you see the advertisement on TV, it says that SMS so and so and then something will happen and something will happen. But at the end of the day, what we find is that while a sale is made through a remote process, it cannot be fulfilled because the payment mechanism is still not there. And as soon as this mobile payment mechanism comes in, then when you advertise on the TV, you can actually close the sale. Uh, Bhargav, I want to put this across to you. Yes, uh, you, there is a lot of potential, but will there be a limit as to the type of transaction that we'll see uh, being done on the phone? I think, uh, you know, the answer to that question, Dhamini, my sense is that uh, at the end of the day, first, consumers have to become comfortable using mobile payments. And that's a change in consumer behavior. Your mobile commerce has, has a huge opportunity for the insurance industry in other areas. 
not necessarily payments there is a huge opportunity that we see in terms of using the entire mobile you know uh, platform devices and the, and the network on service delivery on convenience uh, on uh, using distribution you know today if you look at the way insurance is sold it's largely through physical distribution a bit of telecalling happens but it's largely through agents and and bank issuance partners and if you look at the opportunity of uh, empowering the agency uh, using a, let's say a tablet or a, or a smartphone uh, clearly the convenience and the immediacy of sale increases so there are opportunities there so there are a lot of other you know benefits uh, which might believe uh, might believe insurance companies will use first and then we'll look at uh, you know uh, sourcing new business purely uh, or, you know as an through the m commerce platform okay now let's get to the banker on the panel uh, priya this question really is about is the bank going to play the key role on this or is it going to be uh, the telecom company that's going to be key there are two ways of doing mobile banking so the model which is there in some countries is where there is a prepaid mobile electronic wallet which uh, is what you're referring to where you load a certain amount of money onto that mobile chip and then that is used as currency and you know the mobile holder can use it to make payments or to transfer money the model which the reserve bank of india is trying to establish in india is one which is uh, embedded into the banking system and the idea behind it is in a country like india where banking is still growing up it's important that the entire payments infrastructure is well coordinated is a part of the banking system there isn't an alternative payments mechanism which is created because it is felt by everybody that in doing so you are exposing some of the potential users of this to misuse so you want to avoid that and therefore you want to keep this within the regulatory ambit and by making banks an important part of this you are essentially protecting the uh, consumers joy deep uh, you said that this this is a business that, that is going to increase um, in in size as we go along what are going so part of this has actually been implemented right the imps has in phase 1 already been implemented it's not been as successful as you would have liked it to be yet on the other side there is hope that this is going to be a game changer for us especially in rural india how do you see the dynamics of all of this playing out well first of all uh, one has to seek how consumer behavior really plays a part if you uh, go back to the figure of the 800 million mobile phones as god have mentioned about only 120 of them are equipped with net ability net uh, logging in ability only about uh, 20 million of them really really are registered to do uh, you know the, the gprs transactions which means people pay the pay that monthly fee and only about 2 million of them actually transact compare this to the 95 million pc users which look much smaller co you know compared to the 800 million figure but they actually transact because people really feel the pc in its stable state is a most secure environment whereas the mobile is something which one carries around it gets lost though nothing really changes because it's not that the mobile getting lost is going to make a lot of difference but that's the psychology of the thing so today buying through the net itself is not uh, you know something people really would uh, choose by themselves unless they, have, they see some extra convenience extra price advantage and some specialized products or Uh, impulse buying products so that has to change my belief is it will change but in like any big change it will need its its uh, time to play out few factors which will really play a part in the top end of the market is going to be availability of simple products availability or rather increase of direct marketing channels as again you heard from both gaurav and bhargav that that those things will act as stimulus for people to go in and actually try to close the deal or really buy across the mobile and we are obviously talking about the new buying here on the rural side we have a very different problem i think uh, mobile phones are there the money that is there whatever little money people have and people are not flush with funds and they are normally paying off their loans uh, i keep on saying that you know urban uh, urban uh, western world and uh, rural india have one thing in common perpetually in debt and debt perpetuates you know one one loan is taken to fill another now in that situation the incentive to keep money in the bank transact through the bank uh, has to be seen whether it is viable for them today people open bank accounts through banking correspondence because they get an enriga payment or if they have they want a loan 
they'll go to a bank or an NBFC. Otherwise, people prefer to keep the money and the money gets cycled pretty fast into either their working capital for little trade that they do or for living through the month. So, uh, I'm not really sure how fast it will catch on rural India unless there are advantages built in. Well, uh, so that's actually a point and I want to throw it across the yeah. panel because really what we will be talking about, the government is saying they want financial inclusion and it's, uh, it's these teeming masses living in, uh, you know, in our villages and, and rural districts who want to open bank accounts but they can't. But here is, uh, is the counter view to that, that they don't want to open the bank account and so they might just prefer to be on the mobile. Does, is there a counter argument to this? Uh, I think there is and you know uh, in a sense uh, when we look at social inclusion and uh, social insurance for the, for the rural, mar rural market uh, interestingly, the way the model is developing, uh, because of schemes that the government has actually launched, particularly in the health side, uh, that's actually happening without the mobile, the banking, uh, you know, services being uh, made available. So these are, uh, you know, below the poverty line customers who are actually being given a health insurance policy without any banking, you know, network being behind uh, behind them. So the the premium actually comes from the from the government directly. It's basically the network that you create to service the claims and serve the customers actually health, uh, the health needs. Now again, let's look at the, 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 the value a mobile can uh, bring in. You know, we as a company, we are actually working on a, on a pilot where uh, in, in two districts of Orissa and, and uh, Gujarat, we are working on a mobile device which becomes the point of sale uh, you know, uh, you know, device for capturing a, a health claim, uh, particularly outpatient you know, health claims. You know, the, the scheme that the government runs is inpatient, which is you know, an hospitalization uh, you know, care. This is basically small you know, dispensaries where someone comes and gets some you know, treatment for, you know, let's say, flu and some medi medication. That information, if you don't capture it real time, you know, there are huge challenges in terms of managing the scheme because of leakages, fraud, etc. So we are actually using a mobile de device to capture that information. Yeah, and, and it's really, you know, in a sense, M-commerce. Uh, so, again, going back to the point that I was making, we probably will see very different applications of the mobile device than what we are visualizing even today. Uh, and you know, you know, there's significant number of innovation and uh, you know pilots that are being being run across the country when we are looking at financial inclusion, particularly in the insurance space. Uh, so we will see a lot more use of mobile device beyond just payments that we've been talking about. So is this going to be for uh, for the lower end customer, below the poverty line customer, or maybe just the lower middle class? Is that the target audience that you think um, will capture? can be captured with this market. Is that, an, is that a, a, a population that the insurance company is actually interested in? Yes, the insurance companies are definitely... Because, no, I ask this question because, you know, the cost of acquisition of a customer, you know, way deep into the interiors is so high that it's actually not profitable. So, does this make a difference in the economics? Because, you know, it's always right to say, yes, you are always targeting that population, but does it make economic no, sense? I'll tell you very frankly, the biggest challenge that, and my colleagues here will support me, the biggest challenge that we face is the last mile closure. So you can reach the customer through an NGO or through whatever channel, but how do you close it last mile? Now, there, there, there are two uh, kinds of challenges we face. One is the regulatory challenge of making sure that we have the written app form and signed app forms and stuff. And the other challenge is how do you collect the money? And as you rightly said, that if you put all the transaction cost and stack it up against the uh, per revenue of that particular transaction, the transaction cost itself is probably three times the revenue of the transaction, not to talk about claims at all. So, I mean, with this initiative, I think uh, this will answer the question of the last mile closure. If uh, the financial inclusion uh, agenda of the government actually is fulfilled through this, and to my mind, I think it would result in opening many more bank accounts, actually, because the person can transact through the phone rather than going to the bank. It's almost like an ATM you're carrying in your pocket, and you can transact across it. And once that happens, then the penetration of insurance is bound to increase because we will be able to collect money without having to create that infrastructure. Infrastructure will already be there. So I think it's a major step and if executed properly and uh, if we actually follow through this in terms of educating the customer, that's very important, then I think it's a major step to increase the penetration. And I don't know whether you are aware, but India has the lowest, one of the lowest insurance penetrations in the world. Priya, just tell us a little bit about the costing involved in this. I do know that if you are clearing a check, the cost uh, per check clearing is usually about 10 rupees. Uh, a, a debit card trans transaction is about 5 rupees. What is the cost of doing uh, a transaction on the mobile phone? Yeah, the interesting thing in this is that uh, 
actually the infrastructure for providing the service already exists and it's in the form of what's called the national financial switch which is basically the backbone on which the atm networks of the banks rest and therefore we are not creating any new infrastructure so that fixed cost is not therefore loaded on to providing this service so really it's just the cost of the actual sms using the uh, broadband the gsm for for just that part that is the cost and that's negligible so really this technology this service can be provided at a fraction of the cost which uh, currently banks incur so joydeep if you had to look at a business model of how this could work for insurance do you need to have um, buy in from all stakeholders to make make sense out of this because you know it it seems like it's all perfect on paper yet it's not taken off till now uh, what needs to be tweaked around as a company we are totally online and we can go to the last mile but we can't fulfill the payment because we are not a payment clearing member right we are an insurance company so uh, today in our let's say in a rural business we, we can tell somebody that okay access from any from any computer any internet device log on to the site and buy our policy be it a distributor be it a customer and the policy could be as low as 30 rupees 40 rupees but uh i do not have a method of taking the payment from that person it has to come through traditional channels either through a you know aggregator or through a check or through any money transfer if this can bridge that gap and make that person at a negligible cost send me 30 rupees and which is let's say because of the technology thing for for me that 30 rupees is economical i can i can do business but i can't pay for the another 10 rupees for the uh, you know clearing then that that completes the loop so i to me the stakeholders are there i think buy in from stakeholders is already there uh, the consumer has to behave the biggest stakeholder the consumer has to believe in it uh, he, the, they have to go through a bit of a learning and an experiential curve to see where rough edges need to be smoothed out i'm sure like every other system there will be a couple of frauds there will be a couple of you know wrong direction of funds but those have to be taken in stride talking about fraud uh, how do you um convince the customer that that this is a secure payment gateway look at the end of the day you know like any other payment system there are a uh, fair amount of controls built in you know you have your own mobile number which is linked to the bank <clears throat> to the bank account and you have to use the, that particular mobile number for the, for the for the transaction plus there's an m pin so there's a pin you know so it's a two factor authentication and if you look at it you know buying let's say a movie ticket using a mobile phone visa buying an insurance so they're using the mobile uh, mobile phone if you bought an insurance you can always and you realize that someone else has uh, you know misuse your account you get the message you can go back to the insurance company and get it uh, cancelled when you buy the you, when you bought a physical good it's gone so you know from a from a fraud perspective you know insurance buying is that way safer if you look at it that way uh, but i think the larger point that you're making is uh, uh, you know what are the systems and processes being put in to control frauds and as i said there are you know you know uh, you know controls in terms of which mobile phone you're using and that has to be linked to the bank account and there is a two factor authentication through a mobile pin so if you uh, lose your uh, you know handphone as also you lose your or give the same pin number to someone else it's your fault really but uh, do you have to choose a bank to be able to do this you reckon or you can you can do it across i mean your bank neutral uh, on these transactions well i think uh, it, for it to work it has to be bank neutral and i think the current system already has around 30 banks registered so so uh, without being bank neutral then you are limiting uh, the penetration of it i mean it'll still be effective for the bank customers but you'd limit penetration but you know just coming back to what bhargav was saying on the fraud piece i mean this is common across all financial transactions so you have credit card frauds you have any kinds of frauds and you know we are talking about insurance i just wanted to add that insurance has a product which ensures these frauds also so <laughs> so basically <laughs> yeah well, i was hoping it would come free you know with with your insurance policy because when you buy, have a credit card that that service comes free of cost as also access to many lounges and many yeah. other perks so, i'm hoping even those would come by it, it may be possible uh, topped up on your the, the, the bankers <laughs> will have to <laughs> support that but too. really the the fraud angle and and that's really critical what kind of encryption is it um, that that ensures that uh, the safety of those transactions is as robust as what you would probably do on the net yeah so um what the rbi has mandated in this respect is that transactions up to 5000 can actually be done through the sms and uh, so that's a much simpler platform 
for transactions which are larger value, more than 5,000, a technology called USSD is used, which is nothing but uh, encryption at both ends, and it ensures that it opens a secure passage of communication between this mobile device and the server at the other end, and so that any traffic that is passing is in the secured corridor only. So that ensures that your transaction is not corrupted. And the PIN, as Bhargav was mentioning, is ensuring that you can access it only if you know the PIN. Right. And so as, as, as any other technology goes, if you give your ATM PIN away to someone, you cannot blame the bank for that fraud or loss. Absolutely. Well, in this uh, digital age, I think uh, mobile commerce is something that's only going to go one way and that's grow exponentially upwards. Uh, financial inclusion is one important aspect of it. And we've seen, of course, uh, with the success of the UID program and once your KYC norms um, are uh, become more available across uh, across the length and breadth of the country you will see far more acceptance uh, and with a robust banking network and if you can just give that last mile connectivity using the mobile phone just into the absolute uh, rural hinter heartland where uh, you just don't even have buses going you probably don't even have uh, decent kacha roads going but yet that mobile can be the hope and salvation for many many uh, of our brother Indians uh, uh, out there it's really going to be a solution uh, uh, to wait and watch for I think the key right now is that we want uh, uh, good buy-in and good awareness coming in uh, from the customers and I think that's going to come uh, as has been pointed out uh, on the urban front that's where the first tug will come and the pull will come and slowly um, the idea will spread across uh, and uh, pull itself. I for one I'm definitely going to make sure that I'm on uh, the mobile uh, for insurance and as I hope you will too and see how easy it is to use it um, and I hope you enjoyed watching this program. Uh, we'll bring you more on the series but for tonight it's goodbye.